I'm going to pick up where I left off on my last live, and I'm going to piece these together for a, a more thorough, well-thought-out video on how to assemble a five-panel hat. So I'm just going to keep on working to finish the first part of this crown, and I'll go ahead and redo that step since uh, I had to cut it short the other night when I had some technical difficulties. So I'm going to keep an eye on things and make, make sure that we don't freeze up here again. So I've got my, my front view here with the camera, my view of the machine right here where my finger is, my table layout here, double needle machine over here where my hands are now. I'm just going to finish this uh, top panel right here attaching to the front panel. Let's see, place like that. You're going to put the right sides together and sew along that edge there quarter inch seam allowance. I don't really pay attention to rules or numbers when it comes to things like seam allowances. I just know how to do things by eye now and I have a workflow. So again, I'll, I'll go over all this again for people uh, who want to see how, th how it's made or for people actually trying to make hats on their own. Again, this isn't going to be a real like tutorial video. I'm just showing the process and trying to establish a workflow for the cameras and streaming and recording all the angles. These videos are just going to be constructions of uh, how to construct a five panel hat. Nothing about design, nothing about machines, threading machines, what type of machines. I'll, I'll probably have separate videos for all of that at some point. Trim that edge away, and now we move to the double needle machine. But let me start from scratch with another set of top panels that I already have cut out. Like I said, I'm not going to go through cutting or any design work here. Everything's already cut out and laid out the way that I want it. I'm just going to be piecing things together, show people the process, and uh, document everything. Probably going to use these in a different video later on at some point. Okay, so again, you're going to put your right sides together your top panel and I'm noticing I don't have interfacing for this one so I need to add that an hour or so tonight and then maybe again later after the kids are in bed all right all the cameras are still working it says streaming it says recording whatever nothing fell asleep on me all right let's go probably in the way of that view. You need to pull it a certain way sometimes. Try to give a couple of different views. So that's half-inch bias tape just coming out of this feeder right here, being fed underneath the double needle machine, the top stitch, all the seams to make sure they're extra strong, extra official. There we go. Which are just top panels here that attaches to the front panel of a hat. You're gonna put them right sides together. You could pin them. I don't really pin. I clip sometimes just to keep things extra aligned, but eventually you get comfortable to the point where you can just kind of do things by eye, by hand, and you know, it's up to you. Okay. Stitch, depending on size head you're going for, either as close to the edge as you can or about a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you're gonna trim as close to the threads. Once you're stitched in, follow the edge of the pattern as long as your pattern is cut well. If not, you could draw some lines on there. And I'll post a link to a pattern at some point when I stitch this video all together um, and put it on YouTube. Back stitch to lock it in. So 
So now next step is going to be to top stitch this and then attach the front panel. You want to top stitch and do the double needle between all the steps. It doesn't really work out. Give the, the So these, I don't know if I'm in the, okay. No, I'm probably in view better for that one. I'm just trimming as close as I can to the threads. Depending on your material or how you sewed will determine how well or how much you really need to do this and how much to take off. Again, that's all going to revolve around your uh, how you're doing your top stitching, how you're doing your bias taping, if you're doing that at all. But I'm just showing my process of how I do everything. If one of my machines runs out of thread or the bobbin runs out, I might just take a break. I might call it a day, depending on how I feel. But at least everyone will get to see how things go one way or another at some point. So this all went on pretty well. Bias taping, sometimes you get edges here that aren't aligned or the tape doesn't feed the right way. But when everything's working good, everything's good. So we're back where we started now at the top panel, top stitch, the upper panels attached and top stitched. We're gonna attach the front panel. Flip it over, line it up. Just make sure it's gonna look right. You could pin, clip this, do whatever you want, but I've done this a couple times now, so I'm just gonna keep it going. a little uneven on one side so I'm going to go ahead and actually I got to see how it lays out yeah now it looks like if I pulling it on the right way when I stitch the double needle I might just need to make one little adjustment here so that it falls a little more properly we should be good to go should be exactly what I wanted. Okay, that's better now. All right. I'm going to trim that. Top stitch, and then I'm going to start putting the side panels on, which can be the trickiest, one of the trickier parts of the crown. Probably the hardest part. Okay, top stitch.
do that. So next up to attach the side panels, I'm going to be attaching from here, rolling out, so that that sits like that. So the way to do that, I've got a little imperfection here I want to cover up, but I think I'm going to do that with this loop. how we cover things up. Okay. Go over stuff like that in another video. Anyway. You're going to attach the first side panel, you're going to flip them right sides together. Like I said, right sides meaning the, the sides that you would see that are visible. You're going to start from here. So all around the curve as you pull and twist and like I said, this is the hardest part. So I'm going to start here and go all on the edge and make this attach to this edge. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to happen. This camera mounted at the machine how helpful it is if depending on the light and try to get the light a little better of an area but it is what it is I'll try to fine-tune this all at some point well, that actually looks kind of good I think there should be no delays on anything cuz I'm not streaming this all from one PC and it's like multiple views being output to a different machine that other area I just repaired. Oh, I might have bumped the camera now, I don't know. No, it's still on, that's a good thing. Sorry, I'm still getting this all figured out with the recording. Now back stitch here to just keep that place in, that piece in. kind of just fold it up and line it up make sure it's gonna sit right I don't know if any of these angles are getting all that but try to get it close eventually might have missed a little spot there I might have to go back look at that. I think one spot I might have not caught. I'll have to adjust. Yeah, right over here. Didn't catch, but I'll go back and get a little closer on that. But otherwise, looks like it'll be good. And we're going to do the top stitch next. Yeah, this one's going to come nice. Let me just fix this one area right here. in there without going too far and that should do it let's check again oh, still, 
So let me catch just one little. Oh, I can see right here why. That's. All right, now we should be good. We're going to trim that and top stitch. And then attach the other side panel. got so many cameras I don't know which one I'm supposed to be looking at or hopefully this looks good in streaming hopefully you could hear me and all that like I said if not I'm really just testing and I'm gonna do this a couple of times nope. I'm gonna have to go over that zipper I just noticed because I got clipped a little bit too close I'll have to put something in place before I attach that to the crown to uh, get rid of that issue. All right, I'm gonna trim that as close to the threads now and do the top stitch. Again, if anyone knows more about this streaming stuff than I do, I'm assuming at some point I'm going to have to just pay for a service to do it all right with the different windows and the different views and be able to use multiple platforms because, I don't know, it's just, it seems like a lot of work, more than I thought. There's enough work to get the camera set up to do all this, let alone have to figure out the software and a, a service, you know, a way to record the screen, capture the screen, output the the camera feed simultaneously and have it all work. And for all I know, I look up and it's frozen and I don't know what recorded and what didn't. But like I said, I'm gonna try to at least do this for an hour so I can test the recording and see how see how that went. Hopefully I didn't just clip this again here, did I? So you gotta watch when you're trimming the edges of the side panel because you could go a little too close and then you gotta make a repair or eat the hat. That looks pretty good. I should have enough. I should have enough thread in the double needle machine to get at least this done. Then we'll see what time it is. Oh, well, as you can see. The sewing often takes, takes the least amount of time. It's all the prep work, it's everything else. It's the trimming, the cutting, the planning, the designing. Maintenance of the machines, threading them. Let's do this now. It goes together. So this should be live now. And uh, I'll try to reshare everything once, it's all, once all the videos are complete. Hoping to get through a full hat tonight. This is where we left off. Top panel's done. Front panel attached. One side panel attached. And the seams taped along the inside with the top stitch from the double needle machine right over here. Uh, next, we're going to pick up where I left off with the next side panel. It's going to be this guy right here. Again, we're going to attach like that. Top view should show that well. I think I'm going to be going to, I think I'm here in Twitch is probably the place where I want to be for uh, streaming with commenting and all that, but I don't really know if I could interact with people on it with a keyboard or read comments while I'm doing all this too and expect everything to be perfect. One thing at a time though. Camera views look good. Like I said, this is one of the 
probably one of the first hardest parts sewing this curve right here. So let me just show again. We're gonna flip like that and put the right sides together. I know a lot of people have been asking for tips on how to do certain parts. Some people don't care and just want to see how it's made, whatever. It's cool. signal again I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with that like I said I think most of the uh, that that process caught otherwise I did it twice so can always go back and rewind that but I don't know which camera is best to show this on I'm assuming this one right in front of me so got both side panels on now go ahead and top stitch that and then start working on the back closure and the rest of the hat and then attaching the crown to the brim I'm gonna make a brim I'm gonna try to do all that as fast as I can tonight Let's that now. mindful of this button right here. Just make it. Some tension on it. I should have just made it. Yep. So, right. And I got a thick seam coming up. I'm going to try to pull out a little bit more. Alright. 
I'm pretty happy with that. Next is the back, back closure I'm going to do in a similar way with the, with the double needle machine. It's a little tricky, sometimes it doesn't always work out perfectly and it's got to be redone or i got to rip part of the seam and go over it again, but we'll see how this one goes. It's really just about doing it slowly. It's not easy to do this tired at night, so so I usually only do an hour or so. I gotta be up early for work and kids and stuff. kind of turn as you go I'll give a more detail uh, a more detailed in-depth tutorial with better camera angles one day in the future I'm sure this is really all just a test and to show the process and to test the camera angles all that streaming I threw this little clip in just as a guide but I could have used my finger just to hold it Once you get to the middle point, you got to kind of grab again and again, depending on what you're sewing, what fabric, what garment you're reworking, it's going to be different. It seems to be going good. This is an older vintage machine, so there's uh, it's definitely better out there, but this thing is a beast. It's a workhorse. I think it was used to make hot air balloons before uh, I bought it. It doesn't go in reverse, but I don't really need it to. Since everything I do with it is taping seams and all those seams get crossed over again with other stitching, there's no need to go in reverse to lock the stitches. And there's ways too if you need to. So that came pretty perfect. Try to get it's a little tough without the light angle properly to see. So all the double needle work is now done, all the top stitching. So that's a big part of the crown done. This is just a paper strip. I use as a guide. You get upholstery tack strip, it's a little thicker, but you don't really need thick for this type of job. But. Something a little thicker or stiffer could help with, with lighter fabrics, maybe, but it's really just a guide. If you ask me, it's not 100% necessary, but it depends on your cutting, too, and just what you're comfortable with. I always do it. It should go all the way around, but if you're 
I just I just go as far around as these strips that I bought go. You can get longer ones or make your own, I'm sure, get it on a roll. So I'm just gonna sew. I don't know if I hit that can. Yeah, this this camera's probably not gonna pick it up. Let me try to switch the other way. I just gotta pin this flat pocket in place. going to sew as close to the edge of the side panel as I can, keep it straight, and this is going to help when I align the crown to the brim. A thicker seam there. And this isn't going to show on the other side, so I don't care what thread is in my machine. Oh, but looks like I ran out. I'm going to change the bottom. So then I'm just going to trim the edges. And this isn't going to show anyway, so you really don't even have to, but just for give it a clean edge, see how it's going to look. Can't hurt. Once I attach the brim and the sweatband, that's all going to be covered up the way that I do it. But that's the full crown construction from start to finish in three different parts and three different nights. But that's just the way I'm able to work sometimes. I can't sit down and create fully from start to finish whenever I want, which is fine. Brim is a plastic brim. Bendable. You know, two pieces of the North Face Gore-Tex. Got a little mesh pocket I made here too, so it's gonna sit like that. Gonna have to sew the right sides together in order to create a pocket that we're gonna flip inside out and then insert the brim in, so easier to show than to explain, but I kinda already Line this up how I want it. Just need two squares big enough to cover the brim and allow some extra bleeding room on the side. Okay. I'm gonna mark my brim out now. Hold it together. together since I got this pocket. All right. Here we 
go. I'm going to use a shorter stitch length to keep it tight, like two millimeters. I'm going to go slow and sew along the whole line. Video and audio, that's good. It's a little tricky sewing Gore-Tex like this. You kind of got to feed it a little bit yourself and let the machine guide it while holding tension so nothing bunches up. I'm going a little bit outside the line because I know I want to have a small amount of extra room and I might have went too close on the first side. But you can always shave the brim too down and make things fit. Flip it inside out. I'm going to use powered scissors, it'll be faster. Usually. I just flip that inside out. So the brim's gonna go in there and it should sit perfectly and then we close this off and there'll still be a little pocket on the front. So you're going to take the brim, insert the brim. Seems to fit perfect. The edge is right here, so we're going to close it off and trim out. I use a different machine to do that that I don't have a camera on right now, so I wanna to try to move the camera and or show how it can be done on a regular industrial machine with a different foot. I'll probably just do that. Yeah, I have the foot right here, so I'm gonna take a zipper foot Gonna get it nice and close to that edge right there and sew along the edge. Now I have a, a post bed machine. Let me see if I could just move the camera enough to show that. No, no. I'm gonna lose this feed. Oh, 
No, it should be okay. Not plugged in. This would be the other machine that I use to get closer to the brim, but we're going to just do it here with the regular industrial. And I'll show that way another time, since most people don't have a machine like that anyway. Out. It's not the one I want, it's this one. Left. Just tucking the brim in and making sure everything folds right and no seams are kind of overlapping at the edges. And it's going to look right once it's finished. But stitching some lines on the brim is going to help with that too. Along with what we're about to do right now, which is close it up. I'm just going to start from the middle and go on both sides since I'm not concerned about thread color. Although my other machine I use an invisible thread on so I never have to worry about thread color and that's one of the pros with that, keeping that machine set up like that. Um, if you see on this camera right here on the, the fisheye lens, I'll try to get a little closer but I mean, you get the idea. You're just going as close as you possibly can with that zipper foot. You can keep making sure the brim is tucked in perfectly as you go. I'm going to go kind of fast here. Tuck that back and close that up.
press her foot of your sewing machine to be your guide, but well, depends what you're going for. too short should be about 24 25 inches right. swept end it's gonna sit with the fuzzy side or the side you want to touch the head along the bottom so Stitch from the middle out. I'm going to measure halfway in the middle, line up halfway in the middle, and I'm going to attach along the edge with this machine, which is kind of customized for what I need. A rolling zipper foot, so I can put these bands on and I can attach them. To them. So, yeah, you know what? I'm definitely going to need this view for when I do the rest. So, good thing I figured this out. You know? Although this is going to be really tough to maneuver, holding the thread to start. Well, I'm not messing up the camera, so forgive me if this does not come out right. Now I have to do it again. The. the the, the camera work and the head. Yeah. Again, if anyone else knows more about the streaming stuff or if I should do Twitch or Periscope, Feel free to message me with some recommendations. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this with this camera this close, but I'll figure that out next. I may just have to back it up and can't get as close a view as I'd like. I'm just going 
as close as I can to the brim. This is going to hide any of that other stuff in the street. You did see just prior to this stuff. And I don't think other people do this, but I mean, everyone's got a different method of attaching the band and the crown to the brim, the, the band to the crown first and then the brim, but this is the way I do it. That's that, that's the brim. So that's pretty much done now. All we gotta do is attach the crown. Which is pretty much probably the hardest part, so. Like I said, I'll have to do a separate video. Okay. So to achieve that, we're gonna, again, put right sides together. So you gotta flip like that. And now, where I have that marker point, we're gonna mark the center of the hat and the center of the brim. And we're gonna eyeball it as we go and make sure that it's centered and probably do it in bits and pieces. But basically you're gonna attach the inside of the line curved as close as you can this is the hardest part this is where you know I, I gave up a number of times and I know other people have told me they just don't want to bother it's hard depending on the machine you use so it's going to go around the whole edge like that so that when it sits clean you won't see any stitching and it'll look like a regular factory hat but let me stop talking and, and, and get to that part because it doesn't always work out as easy as it sounds. So I'm just going to fold my hat so that the seams meet and I'm going to mark off the center just so I know. Yourself something it might be difficult and frustrating but again for practice you can seam rip and get it closer you can do it as many times as you want as long as it looks okay but I guess I want to practice and get it perfect sure it's going to look right the way that I have it lined up. Go back over here. You can see better from over here, yeah. So I just put that edge on just to make sure things are going to line up nice once I go along that whole edge. It's going to sit right. And it'll be right down the center. Once we're all done. Sorry, it's hard to get the perfect angle, and like I said, I'm still testing how to uh, maneuver with all these cameras and machines and clutter and whatnot. So, 
I'm going to continue to sew along that edge once I take another close look and just make sure we're all good. And since the sweatband's already attached after this step, I'm really pretty much done. Just going to add the closure, the eyelets, any other finishing touches. Keep these going. I don't know where I'm at. I still can't tell if the stream is actually working. I tried monitoring from another account. I couldn't tell. But I see that it saves, so it goes to my archive, so I'm just going to download it all. Or I should be recording right now on the PC. And then I'll just edit it all together into a, a shorter video with all the steps. And hopefully that'll be cool for anyone who wants to see. I'll use my finger as a guide, sort of. do this with the camera in the way I, mean, I don't even think you can see what I'm doing too good so I might just try to move it out of the way or position it differently maybe. While I'm over here, I'm going to close up those other brims and I could show maybe a little bit closer what this purpose of this machine is. Switches onto the band so that it gives me a head start there. a little crooked so I'm just going to rip the seam real quick and, and just do that one more time. Like I said it looked like it was going to line up perfectly but for whatever reason it did not. Just the nature of working with handmade items and cutting by hand.
other things. I should be good from here, but probably going to check halfway through. I'm just going to seal up the whole thing and do it and then pinch post it from the side. And other people might have better ways to do this. I've tried a few different ways, but this still seems to be the way that works best for me with this machine. Although sometimes you got to you know, do things a couple times. from the center out is another way to do it, but that could often be a little more cumbersome to, to work with your hands from the left and the right sides then. At least I found that. So again, I'm still learning if I got to get an external mic or something like that. I'll do that for a future stream. Out on my side here and see how it's going to look. Right, I'm going to go about halfway and then look. Like I said, this is the most difficult part. too much, but let me see. Bit of pulling and twisting at the end here. So for anyone who thinks it's easy, it's not always easy.
gonna try to move the camera back to finish the rest of the finishing touches on the other side. Actually, you know what? I got another step here to finish. Let's do that first. I'm just gonna finish attaching the band and putting the tags on. And then we're pretty much done. I might even stop here and do the, the rest tomorrow. I don't want to push it. Just finishing putting the sweatband on the rest of the crown. And I don't really pin anything or clip it, just hold everything by hand. I might hit the camera on this one, I got no choice. I'm trying to go around it. I'm close on this one, but I'm going to get it. Covered up that zipper part, so I'm just going to try to go as close as I can to the edge. And it should all sit right.
goes to the edge there. I might have to pat that up some way or rip that seam and get a little closer. Let's see. that that should alleviate Still got video, still got audio, that's good. I don't know what I lost before, but I'll figure it out. I'll do a better video eventually. So right now, crown and brim are all done. Sweat band is done. Everything's looking good. Just need to do the closure, seal up the back. The timer is it. All right, I'm gonna try to do that in the next 20 minutes. I gotta take a two minute break though. I'll be right back. I gotta move that camera. It's three quarter inch webbing. Nothing too crazy.
trying to see which is the best view for this. the wrong size buckle I think. Alright. So I got my black on the bottom now. Touch this part of the buckle. You do a box stitch, just making a box this way, it will be extra strong. bar tack it as well which would just be adding the X but not exactly necessary for this and then from there I'm also going to close it up by stitching right along here so that the sweatband attaches to the hat and sits properly. And I'm just going to use my fingers to feel where the sweatband is and I kind of know where it is. I'm just going to stitch for like an inch maybe. throw a stitch just right in the front too because of the way that it's sitting on the, uh, the additional piece of zipper. Almost the same thing on the next side. Tuck that in. I'm going to go back on the sweatband a bit and stitch back so that this is the way that I do it so that it can fit uh, a, a wide range size heads from small to large. So. The buckle can tuck back in, or you know, it can go large. Another box stitch.
right? And we're gonna just stitch that up the same way so the sweatband attaches to the crown in the back, right over here. done besides the eyelets at this point. Oh, maybe not. This didn't sit the right way. I'm going to try to top stitch this. If that doesn't work, I'm going to have to take that edge apart and uh, fully adjustable, one size fits all. Got three pockets, utility loops. We've got the glow mesh in the front. Glow marker on this zipper pocket on top. Zipper pocket on the side side pouch. It's not too big for me like that, but you should fit anywhere from extra small to extra large. If you got a really, really extra large head and you're doing a commission job with me, just let me know and I'll adjust my pattern to on this. I'll probably, yeah, I'm going to do an eyelet or two here. I guess I missed all that. Uh oh, you do have your hair. Look at your hair. Dad, you go home.